So now we're going to make an abrupt shift here into chapter 22.1. Um, so I apologize for the kind of skipping around. I like kind of skipping around when I think the order of the book is not as, um, as I don't want to say as good, but any, anyways, we're skipping here to 22.1 um, to finally start talking about these complex ions that we had you play around with a little bit in the very beginning of lab. Um, and I've got a fantastic example here to start with. Uh, this is the compound known as Prussian blue. So that's the common name. There's obviously like a complex chemical name that we'll learn how to do soon. Um, so this Prussian blue is made up of a complex ion. Okay, and here it is. This is the, the compound. Um, and it's this lovely blue color. And most complex ions are, in fact, very colorful. So I'm going to call these nature's dyes, okay? So um, for example, this Prussian blue famously was used for this painting that I absolutely love, The Great Wave of Kanagawa by the Japanese artist Hokusai-san. Um, so right when a lot of these paintings were made um, a long time ago and even in today, the only source of paint and dye was from the earth. Um, so people kind of discovered a long time ago, these complex ions um, are very colorful compounds, okay? Naturally occurring colorful compounds. So um, let's break down this chemical formula because this is complex, okay? So this part is our complex ion. And as you can see, it's an anion because it's got the negative charge. Not all complex ions are anions. Some of them are cations, okay? And this complex ion is composed of an iron 2 plus central metal. So there is this cation central metal. However, it's bonded to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 cyanides. And we remember that cyanide um, is uh, this compound that's got a triple bond and lone pairs and it is negatively charged. It's got a negative one charge, okay? And because there's six of them, one, two, three, four, five, six, that makes six minus plus two plus gives us four minus for the charge of this complex ion, okay? So this anion also has to be balanced by a cation and specifically in Prussian blue, it's balanced by an iron 3 cation. Now you notice here that the iron 3 plus um, is different than this iron 2 plus, but also this iron 2 plus is bonded to all of these cyanides. Okay, so they are different. One of these makes the cation, one makes the anion. And now you notice that there's four of these iron 3 pluses. And that's because this complex ion is four minus. So to balance the charge, we need three four minuses to balance four three pluses. And so if I kind of drew this in a cartoon way, this smaller um, ion is my cation. Um, and I'll draw the complex anion as a bigger thing. So there's one, two. And then now, right, I need four of these and three of these. And because it's an ionic compound, they're going to go plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. So I'd have another iron three and then another complex ion and then another iron three and another complex ion and one last iron three. So I would have one, two, three, four of these for every one, two, three of these. And that will make this neutral compound Prussian blue. Okay, so let's break this down a few definitions, okay? So a complex ion is an ionic species consisting of a metal ion, and I'll write a Lewis acid bonded to one or more Lewis bases, okay? So that's why we talked about Lewis acids and Lewis bases in the first part of this lecture series. Um, so a ligand is a name that we give to a Lewis base bonded to the central metal ion of a complex ion. So these cyanide 
things are, are ligands. We would call those the ligands, okay? So the coordination sphere, it's kind of like the whole thing. So when I was, um, so it's the ligands that are bonded directly to the metal via coordinate um, covalent bonds. So like when I drew this whole big circle right here, kind of representing this Prussian blue, or really the complex ion, um, that would represent like the entire coordination sphere. So the coordination sphere is like the whole thing, okay? The whole complex ion. So coordinate bond, that's a bond formed when one anion or molecule donates a pair of electrons to another ion or molecule to form a covalent bond. So that coordinate, coordinate bond is that new bond that we form from the Lewis acid, Lewis base chemistry. Um, coordination number, of course, is the number of these coordinate bonds. And finally, the steric number is the number of bonds plus any lone pairs that are around a central metal, okay? So for example, here is the zinc two plus cation, and these empty orange things are showing you empty orbitals, okay? So remember these metals, I talked about this previously, these metals are typically deficient in valence electrons. So now they have all these empty orbitals, so this is gonna make this a good Lewis acid. Now here you can see I have one, two, three, four of those empty spaces. So I have four ammonias and these four ammonias are gonna be good Lewis bases because they've got the lone pairs to donate, right? We can draw a electron, a new bond forming to every single one of these. And so now these new bonds that are formed are our coordinate bonds. If I were to draw a circle around this whole thing, that's our coordination sphere, like the whole dang thing. Um, I would count up one, two, three, four of these coordinate bonds. And for the steric number, I would also call that four because there's no extra lone pairs around the zinc. So let's do a few more examples, okay? So here are some examples of either um, iron, nickel, or cobalt, all with six bonds around the central iron. So we could say the coordination number is six. Now here there's no, you don't see any lone pairs, but we have to remember our geometry from Chem 109. And because these six bonds are all spread out in this, octahedral geometry, that means the court, the steric number also has to be six, uh, because that's the only way I could get this octahedral shape is if I didn't have any other lone pairs, okay? So now what about this platinum ammonia complex ion? Well, so you can see there's one, two, three, four in the coordination number, and this geometry is called square planar because it's a square and it's a plane but now if you think about this um, normally when we would see four bonds it would make a tetrahedral shape right so but we have to be able to infer that this is square planar because there's a lone pair up here and there's a lone pair up here and even though it's not drawn we need to be able to see that because of the way it's adopting the square planar geometry on the other hand, now, if we look at this zinc complex ion with water, we can see there's one, two, three, four bonds. And because it's making this tetrahedral tetrahedral shape, um, we can also say the steric number has to be four um, because that's the only thing that's going to give us this tetrahedral geometry. And then finally, the silver ammonia complex ion, we can see that it's going to be two, two, and linear um, because it's got two bonds. We know that it can't have any other lone pairs um, because otherwise it would have adopted a different geometry than this linear shape, okay? Um, so let's see what's coming next. Okay, so um, following next, we're gonna get into naming these complex ions.